Hello, we're going to talk about rational exponents today. Remember, rational is a word for like a fraction. So these are exponents that are fractions, um, which are super duper helpful, especially as you get higher up in math to help you kind of put stuff together and simplify expressions. So just a couple things to remember. And if you want to write this down, just pause the video and write it because I'm not going to spend a long time on it. Uh, the rules of fractions obviously will become important. So if you're adding or subtracting fractions, remember you need the same denominator and you need to combine the numerators through addition or subtraction. Also remember that if it's through subtraction that you need to distribute if you can. Uh, multiplying across the numerators, across the denominators and simplifying. You can also simplify before that, you know, cross simplify it essentially, um, totally your choice. Divide, you flip the second fraction and multiply, and then proceed with multiplication. The other thing that you really need to make sure you really are good at are the laws of exponents. When you multiply, you add the exponents. When you divide, you subtract. Power to power, multiply. Anything to the zero power is one, and a negative exponent means I'm in the wrong place, and you move it to the bottom. So those are just review things we've reviewed a few times already, but they come up again here. This is the new part. So a to the m over n looks kind of funky, but basically the bottom number is what we've been calling the index. It is the kind of root. And the top number is the exponent um, for the variable. So you can see that a to the m over n is the nth root of a to the m. So what does that look like in real life? Look at example one. The, remember, four is the index. So this is going to be the fourth root of x to the third power. That's how it works. Now, if you can simplify at this point the inside of the radical, then do it. Um, in this case, we can't. So this is just kind of a numerical representation of this rule. All right, so here is one that has a little extra work in it. So the seven has no exponent, so it stays here. One half, so we're gonna use the square root of the stuff that's inside to the first power. So let me get a pencil real quick. So essentially, you could do it like this if you kind of want to see where all that comes into play. Um, but since it's to the first power, those parentheses in the first power are implied. Now, at this point, we need to simplify the um, radical to simplify the expression. So this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. We already have our 7. The square root of 4 is 2. And we still have the square root of 3, w, left. So 14 root 3, w is the final answer. And you can see that this actually looks better than that in this case. So it's really going to depend on what the goal is. And right now we're just practicing the idea. All right, so pause the video and try number three and then come back. All right, so we this time are turning this radical into a fractional exponent or a rational. So our base is k. It is to the fifth power over the fourth root. So k to the five over four. These are just going back and forth between the two things. For number four, this is a case where, remember, there are kind of imaginary parentheses. That's a group under the radical. So this is going to be x, y. There's an imaginary first power and square root. And remember, it's a square root if there's no index written there. It's implied if there's nothing there that it's a square. OK. Hopefully you're like, what? That's it? But if it is tricking you, let me know. All right? Next one. This one you can look at a couple different ways. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through this two ways that you could look at it. And one of them hopefully will make sense to you. And I'll use two colors so you can keep it straight. All right. Way number one would be to, again, picture those parentheses there. This would be to the one third. Okay. The entire group like this to the one third. 
at this point, you would use the rules of exponents and kind of, I call distributing, even though I know it's really not called that, but distribute by multiplication the exponent to each exponent. Remember, the 9 has an exponent of 1. So that's going to be 9 and the uh, rule when you have a power to a power is to multiply. So 9 to the 1 third, x to the 7 thirds, y to the 4 thirds. Now you can simplify these from here, but this is the point where I would turn it back to uh, radicals. So I have the cube root of 9, the cube root of x to the 7th, and the cube root of y to the 4th. So that's how I would do it at this point. Um, and then I'm going to simplify each one. So the cube root of 9 is already simplified. This one, I'm just going to write it like this and we'll kind of play with everything. This one here, we can do x to the 6th and x. Remember that adds up to x to the 7th. And x to the 6th is a perfect cube. So that's going to become x squared and the cube root of x. And this one, we can do y cubed and y. Again, that's y to the fourth power. y cubed is a perfect cube. So we're going to have y. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And then we have our extra cube root of y. And now I'm just going to kind of put everything together. So we have our x squared and our y that are in front, the coefficients. And the rest all have the same index. So we can multiply the insides together. So this would be the final answer simplified. Um, and it didn't say whether we need to write this with fractional exponents or not. But if you did, it would look like x squared y um, 9xy to the 1 third, or something like that. So these are just kind of varying ways to write the same thing. And it will depend on what the instructions were, which way you want to do it. The other way would be to just skip this part with the fraction exponents and immediately um, do this, do it from here. And then you pick it up from here down. So it really will just depend on whatever you feel like doing in the moment. Um, really, that's it. This was just supposed to give you a good general overview of how to manipulate them. All right. Let's look at how this works with actual operations. So here we have p to the 1 fourth times p to the 3 halves. Following the laws of exponents, since it's a multiplication problem, we need to add the exponents. Following the, the rules of fractions, though, we need a common denominator. So if I multiply both of these by 2, then I have p to the 1 fourth times p to the 6 fourths, which is p to the 7 fourths. And again, from here, you can look at it two different ways. You can be like, well, p to the 4 fourths is going to be a whole p, p to the first, and we'll have 3 fourths left. So from there, you could say p, um, how was I going to write that? No, you would keep it like that. I wouldn't want to write it the other way. I was just thinking. All right, the other way you could write it would be like this, uh, the fourth root of p to the seventh. And if you do it that way, which is probably the best way you can simplify, um, p, you got to divide by 4. So to the 4th p cubed equals p times the 4th root of p cubed. All right. I feel like I'm getting super boring now. That's okay. We're just going to keep trucking. So for the next one. This is an example of when you have to divide. So when you divide, remember that you have to subtract the exponents. 
And again, for subtraction, we need a common denominator. We have a 4, so I'm going to multiply 2 by 2. And then write our n denominator to keep it equivalent. So we have m to the 10 over 4 minus 7 over 4. Keep your common denominator and actually subtract the numerator. Now you can leave it like this, or you could have the fourth root of m cubed. Both answers are good. All right, let's continue. Now I know I'm kind of talking fast, so if you ever want or need to pause the video, you can do that. All right, next one. Power to the power rule. When you have a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. When you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators. So this is a perfectly acceptable answer. Or you could have the sixth root of a to the five. That can't be simplified because we don't have enough a's inside to simplify. Are you getting it? Are you catching on? All right, just a small review about negative exponents. Remember, a negative exponent means I'm in the wrong place. So instead of having it like this, it's going to be 1 over 100 to the 1 half. That's what negative exponents do then we can actually simplify that. So 100 bottom is a square root to the first power, and the square root of 100 is 10. And lastly, number 10. Oh, no, just kidding. There's one more after this. Okay. So we have 4 over the cube root of 4. So we have... 4 to the first power divided by 4 to the 1 third. Okay. So, or negative 1 third, really. It's going to be times negative 1 third. So 4 to the 1 divided by 4 to the negative 1 third. Okay. Um, so that's going to change to multiplication here. Oh, let me do it the next one. 4 times 4 to the negative 1 third. When we multiply, we need to add the uh, exponents. So we need a common denominator. I'm going to change 1 to 3 thirds. Like that. Not multiplying the base. The base stays the same. 3 minus 1 is 2 thirds. So you can leave it like that, or you can have the cube root of 4 squared, which is the cube root of 16. All right, and then we can simplify that cube root of 16 into 8 and 2. Remember, these are like little cube roots. The cube root of 8 is a perfect cube, so that's going to be 2 times the cube root of 2. All right, that's kind of, let me, let me change this one to positive here, since I was kind of playing with that a little bit. All right, and I can write this out a little bit differently here if it helps anybody. We have 4 times 1 over the cube root of 4. That's why it turns to this. Okay, last one. The cube root, or the fourth root of 25m squared. So if we write this out, this would be, 25 to the 1 fourth times m to the 2 fourths. m to the 2 fourths, 25, let's see, 
one fourth. Oh, we're multiplying, so let's do it like this. Equals, nope, hold on. I'm kind of confusing myself here for a second. Give me one sec. I'm trying to decide what my goal is. I didn't write down my directions. So 25. I feel like I just want to kind of ended up changing it to a square root, but we don't have the same base here to multiply. So that won't work. So I wonder if we do, let's see. 25m squared to the 1 fourth. We're still going to end up in that same position. So 25 to the 1 fourth times m to the 1 half. So we really have the fourth root of 25 times the square root of just m. And I feel like I keep wanting to like somehow turn this into a square root, but I can't think of it. So I will come back and do that later. I feel like this is a nicer answer than that. So I'm just trying to figure out what the intention was. Maybe it was just, maybe my intention was just to go like that. I don't know. But that's the idea of how you manipulate them. And truly what just happened to me happens regularly where I'll be working on a problem and I'll change them to fractional exponents. And then I'll be like, no, I don't want that. And change them back to radicals. Just whatever you're working with in the moment is what it's fit for. And since I have no, no end goal for this one, I don't know what the goal is. But hopefully you can see how everything kind of manipulates, which is really the goal of this video. All right. Have a great day.